With the 15th anniversary of Minecraft and its recent 1.21 update, I've seen a wave of new players, many of them adults, joining the community to discover how a ragtag indie game had the staying power to become a decade and a half global phenomenon. But for all its charm and potential, the same sandbox style that grants it such appeal can also be a double-edged sword, with a huge learning curve for an inexperienced player. If that's you, you're in the right place, and welcome to Minecraft Caves Notes. The goal of this series is to create a library of easy-to-digest guides for understanding the basics of the Minecraft world. Things like how monsters spawn, what types of terrain and friendly creatures exist, types of movement and travel, and the physics of a world where stone stays put in mid-air and water can be replicated. Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Caves Notes. I've actually been looking forward to this video because of how interesting the topic is to me personally. Today I want to share with you the in-game physics of water and lava. And then dive into how a bucket can become your best friend. Sorry, Darth Carnivore. Anyhow, I'm not wasting any time. Let's get started. So first, let's talk about where water and lava generate. Across the world, water naturally generates up to Y level 63. That means that the highest block that water can fill is level 62. Here we have some interesting generation where it looks like we have a tiny little ocean biome that generated uh, in between the lands. So there's a sunken ship. Man, that's cool. I might have to provide the seed number and coordinates for this one. Water may generate as one of nine different ocean biome variants. Or as a river which is basically a transition biome between different land masses. Additionally, water may also generate on the surface in random pools or ponds here and there, and in this case and many others, submerged cave tunnels as well. Lava has its own primary level at minus 54, meaning empty spaces generating at Y minus 55 or below will be filled with lava, in some cases creating large lava lakes. Lava may also generate in pools both higher up in the caves and occasionally on the surface. Both water and lava can also generate in random pockets on the sides of mountains or in caves, creating natural waterfalls or lava flows. Now let's start with some of the mechanics and hazards of these two. If you stand in water that is only one block deep, you can walk normally, but your movement will be slowed. If, however, you go deeper than that, you'll see a new bar on your heads-up display, right above your hunger bar. This is oxygen, and as you can see, it slowly begins to deplete, and when it finishes, you'll start taking damage from drowning. In order to fix this, Simply get your head above water. Moving around in water is essentially the same as walking on land. However, your jump button will allows you, allow you to rise, while your sneak button will allow you to descend much more quickly. To swim, activate the button that you would use to sprint, or on keyboard and mouse, this is double tapping the forward key. When you release it, you should be able to wade normally again. If you don't have a boat, you can still travel at roughly the same speed with very little problem. You can actually swim on the surface of the water as long as you keep your eyes properly level with the horizon. As you may notice, having a dolphin nearby may also give you a status effect that increases your swimming speed. Lava, on the other hand, is a different animal. It will reduce your speed even more than water, and you will instantly catch on fire and begin to take significant damage.
I should also add that even if you are able to quickly get out of lava, you will remain on fire for a short while. Now that you know the super basics, let's talk a little bit more about how water and lava actually work. This setup here is both to help explain how water and lava can travel, and also to show the difference between source and flowing blocks. In the game's overworld, water will flow to a total of eight blocks. That includes the source block, which is the block that is placed or that exists freely, followed by seven flowing blocks. Clicking use with a bucket on a source block will pick it up into the bucket, and pressing use on an empty block with a water bucket will place water. However, clicking on flowing water will do nothing. Similarly, lava can be picked up and placed the same way in a bucket, but in the overworld, flow is much slower and will only flow out three blocks for a total of four. So in this illustration we can see just how far water and lava will travel from their source blocks. But let's get a better look at this in three-dimensional space. So with lava, all of these blocks in red will be dangerous to stand on once we place this source block down in the center. Luckily, since lava moves slowly, we can get out of the way. Likewise, with water, water will affect all of these blue blocks from the center here. So here's what we have for these in three-dimensional space. And you'll notice that much like the light mechanic, the game uses taxicab distance, so the distance that water and lava travel uh, end up looking like diamond shapes. Now I know I said three-dimensional, but in reality this is still essentially two-dimensional, so let's talk three-dimensional space. If I now break a block out from under one of these, the lava will continue flowing. And although the block that I broke is a flowing lava block under there, the lava will continue out from that block as though it were another source block, even though it is not, and travel out a, direct, or a distance of three blocks in every direction. Likewise, we can do the same thing with water. If we break out the corner here, our water will expand from the downward flowing block out horizontally another seven in each direction. Now in the Caves Notes uh, introductory sequence, I mentioned that water can re be replicated. So let's talk about that. In each of these examples, our white blocks here are where we can place water in order to replicate it. If we have one source block on the left side of this 3 by one trench and we place another one, we now have created a new source block in the middle. And we could pull water from this infinitely. The same thing can be done with an L shape by placing one here and one here and then our blue block here is infinite water. Essentially that's because any uh, water source block that has another water source block two blocks away from it, whether in a straight line or the taxicab L shape, as long as it also has a solid block or a, another water source block underneath, essentially any block that does not allow water to flow through it, then that third block will create a new water source block. The way you'll typically see this done is with something like a 2x2 two two hole by placing water in one corner and then the opposite corner to create a square of water. And the reason why this uh, is preferred over using one less block to do it is because you can then pull from any block and the water will continue to uh, regenerate. Whereas in these configurations, if you accidentally did pull from a side block, you'll notice that becomes flowing water again, and so you won't be able to regenerate your water that way. Now, lava does not do this. 
Not by default, anyway. We place lot two lava sources down. You'll notice the flow looks a little different, but our source blocks show the flowing animation, and this block in the middle, we can't interact with. It does not matter which configuration we do this in, we still only end up with flowing lava. There is actually a setting to change this uh, where lava will be infinite, but only on the Java version. Now there is a way to replicate lava in a normal survival game, and that is by placing a cauldron with a uh, pointed dripstone above it and a solid block above that and a lava source block at the top. You now see that there are lava particles dripping into the cauldron. It's not a quick process, but at a random point in time, the cauldron will fill up with lava and look something like this. And then it can be collected with an empty bucket by clicking the use button on the cauldron itself. Uh, uh, which will then allow for the lava source to eventually drip some more lava into the cauldron. And if you duplicate this process numerous times, um, you could have quite a bit of lava. So now let's talk about how water and lava interact with each other. If you have an area of lava source blocks, and you place water such that the water flows over the lava sources, it will change to obsidian. If you have flowing lava and you place water in such a way that the water flows over the flowing lava, it will create cobblestone. And then of course you can already see what's going to happen next. We're going <laughs> to fix that. Um, Alright, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Because that was this one. If you place lava so that it flows over water, whether it be standing water, water source blocks, or flowing blocks, it will create regular stone. You'll notice this extra cobblestone here. When these two touch, the water takes precedence when flowing water and flowing lava interact. So because they are next to each other, even though the lava flows into this block, it acts as though the water is interacting with the lava, as opposed to the other way around when the lava flows on top. If you place a lava source block into water sources, the lava source will just immediately turn into a block of obsidian. Whereas if you place a water source block into lava source blocks, the water will remain intact, but it will convert all lava source blocks that are touching it. Lastly, one very special case uh, that you won't worry about for a while, but if you have soul soil with blue ice next to it, and you place lava in such a way that it flows into it, it will form basalt. And this is a way to make a renewable basalt generator. How about items? How do items interact with water and lava? Well, in general, with a few exceptions, any item falling into lava is going to be completely consumed. In fact, even a bucket of lava is going to disappear when thrown or dropped into lava. In water, however, as long as these are source blocks completely, although items may initially sink, they will eventually slowly float to the surface. Now, there are some exceptions here. If we were to replace the bottom blocks under the water with magma blocks, now you can see bubbles pulling downwards and the items get pulled down with it, as do players. On the other hand, if we instead have on the other hand, if we instead have soul sand blocks, then the bubbles go upwards and items and players will be shot up in a bubble column above the soul sand blocks. 
Now, note that this only works with water source blocks. If the blocks above this become flowing water for any reason, then this mechanic will not work. If you use a crafting table and take five planks of any kind and place them in a U-shape, you'll be able to make a boat. Uh, or in the case of bamboo, a raft. Clicking the Use button on water will place down a boat. Clicking the Use button on the boat will allow you to get in and then maneuver it with your directional buttons. The Sneak, or in the case of Bedrock, also the Jump key will allow you to exit the boat. One of the interesting things you may notice about a boat is although it is treated as an entity, much like the item itself, the boat actually has collision. So it can be interacted in certain ways that you might uh, interact with a block, such as standing on top of it uh, or running into it. Unlike an item entity that you can just pass right through. One of the interesting things about this is that you may actually place a boat down in lava the same way you would on water, but it almost immediately is destroyed. A great example of this, though, was the infamous Dreams Boat and Lava Clutch. What? Really? Oh my god! What? Which I, I don't recommend uh, for, for most players, <laughs> not even myself. Well, in the interest of time, I do think that we are going to cut it here today. Um, there will be a part two where we talk much more about the bucket and just how useful that is. And that will be coming up in just about no time at all. So I hope you join me, and I hope you learned something today. As always, thank you for watching.